Welcome back everybody. Today I am bringing my Royal MP Interceptor 650 to the guys of Mad Racing in North Gerwalde, the Netherlands. What I'm going to try to do is get my Enfield on a dyno to find out how many horsepower she actually produces. The factory says about 47 brake horsepower. I'm not entirely sure about that. I think it's more like 43. Anyways, the bike isn't stock anymore. Uh, it has a Scorpion exhaust on it right now. And I don't expect it to do too much, but uh, it could be that it makes a small difference. The reason why I want to know how much it puts out is because I got a set of tech headers, uh, open air filter and a dyno jet power commander. Uh, it's a piggyback ECU. So let's see how she does. I'm gonna try to film it and share it with you. Stay tuned. Right, I just completed a uh, run at uh, Mad Racing and these are the results. I don't know if you can see it, but with the Scorpion exhaust, we have about 41.3 brake horsepower on the rear wheel and 57 newton meters of torque. It's a fairly flat horsepower and torque curve, which I'm very happy with. Um, yeah, it runs really smooth. Um, the main man, uh, Mark, who uh, who owns this place, he said that uh, it's starving a little bit on fuel in uh, in the higher rev range, so above 4,500 RPM. Um, I'm gonna install the tech headers, the open air filter, and the power commander and see what it does. And hopefully we can uh, sort that out. But so far so good. I'm pretty pleased with the results. All right. Okay, welcome back everybody. Um, you just saw how, uh, how the Royal Enfield Interceptor 650 did on the dyno. Um, that was uh, already a couple of weeks ago. Quick edit, right? Right now I'm uh, working on uh, replacing the headers with a set of tech exhaust headers. So this is what the bike looks like now. And uh, these are the factory headers. I have to say I'm not really impressed with the build quality. You can see there's some corrosion over there already. And I don't know if you can see this, but the inner diameter is really small. What I want to show you is at the bottom, there are these holes and they appear to be like drain holes. So it's it looks like it's a double walled header long story short they're rubbish so i got a set of new headers I'm, which i'm gonna install so right now i got the uh, first one off i'm gonna do the second one um there's just one thing i'd like to point out i've seen a lot of videos where people change these headers out uh, factory headers for aftermarket headers sns tech whatever any brand and i see a lot of people twisting the the uh the o2 sensor in a very uncomfortable awkward way folks you shouldn't be twisting it okay there's a little connector here over there 
for each of the O2 sensors. So one on the right, one on the left. These connect onto these. Okay. You press you, you, you press the clip open and you pull it out and you can undo this on the header. If you want to install it on the new set of headers, you just screw it back on with some uh, copper grease and that's it. Okay. Okay. So we're gonna do we're gonna do a little unboxing video. In front of me, I have the tech headers that I ordered some time ago from Tech UK. Uh, I haven't opened the box yet, so let's take a look, right? I live near an airport, so you might hear the odd plane or two. Today is a lovely sunny day, by the way. It's the 26th of February. Okay, so it's packed really well. All right. That's always a good start. Lots of paper, which I will recycle. All right. Okay, so this is the right hand side header. <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. It's so lightweight. It's so light. Let me unpack this immediately so we can take a closer look. Holy shit. Part of my language. Um, okay. This is a uh, brushed stainless steel version and uh, I would have wanted the uh, polished version of these but they don't sell it so I'm gonna I'm gonna I just have to do with do with these now you can see where the welds have been and that they've been uh, grinded off neatly it looks pretty decent the inner diameter is definitely a bit bigger than the factory header so I'm gonna do a close-up on this one later on so let me just put this one aside there's a little booklet and it has a Royal Enfield interceptor on the front. So this is the name of the company, yeah? Tech. I hope you can read that. All right. Other header. And this is the one that goes on the other side. All right, now there are these openings here. There are these openings here that uh, I need to uh, put the rubber grommets from the original headers. I need to push them back in here. Um, I'm not seeing any gaskets. Hmm. I need to check where the gaskets are. Oh yeah, these openings here, those are for the O2 sensors. Now I'm gonna run mine with uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna put a blanking nut on there because I'm running a uh, DynaJet Power Commander, which I still have to install, uh, which will make these redundant. I'm gonna turn it into a closed loop system, I guess. So uh, yeah, put some blanking nuts on there, and then that's it. All right, that's it. Okay, welcome back, everybody. Um, I recently fitted a tech header. That is a free-flowing uh, header that has no catalytic converter. Uh, on my Anfield, I, uh, I put a pair of blanking nuts on where the O2 sensor goes. Uh, I've added a DNA power filter, open air filter, uh, with a modified lid and a power commander for the fueling. Right now, I'm back at my friends here at Mad Racing uh, in North Scharwoude, uh, Netherlands. Um, I did a first dyno run where the Enfield Interceptor 650 had about 41-ish horsepower and 57 newton meters of torque. Uh, I'm very eager to find out to see uh, whether or not my modifications have made a difference. I'm not gonna say what it writes like because uh, I'll leave that until afterwards. But for now, pure statistics, purely objective, 
Let's see uh, what the results are. What do you think? Okay, so uh, the second uh, dyno run was done. Right now, the Enfield has about 48.3 horsepower and 63.3 newton meters of torque. Um, that's a significant increase in horsepower and in torque. I'll, uh, I'll put a clear picture online as well. Um, so right now I spoke to the guy, uh, the main uh, engineer here at uh, Mad Racing, and he told me um, that there is still some room for improvement. So we're gonna see if we can get that done. It has a power commander in it, so it should, we should be able to adjust the fueling uh, and see if we can get a slightly better uh, result. I'm very happy with what it is right now. Um, but if we can improve it, uh, you know, tweak the air fuel ratio a little bit more. Um, and that, that could mean that, you know, I might lose one or one and a half horsepower of peak at the peak, but uh, I will gain some more power, you know, later at the rev, later in the rev range. And I'll see if we can, maybe we can get some more torque earlier in the rev range as well. So fingers crossed. So. Okay, welcome back. Um, so, long story short, I'm back home with the Interceptor 650. And uh, I have to say I'm very pleased with the way it handles, the way it performs. It's got 50 horsepower on the back wheel, 63 newton meters of torque. But above all, I think the most important thing is the way it rides, it pulls. Right now, it pulls so well that I run into the rev limiter in top gear, um, which means that probably I could go um, go up with one tooth on the front sprocket or down on the rear, uh, two teeth on the rear sprocket. But uh, yeah, I'm very happy with uh, the way things have turned out. I'm very pleased and uh, hope you enjoyed this video.